So today, if you have one of these types of cables, it's got multi strands like this one, and it's flexible, and it has a sheath like this. This one is for a BR700 or 600 blower. You should be using one of these, which is a cable luber. And you should be using this stuff, which is called Cable Life and Cable Lube. It works wonders before you change the unit on it. So how you do this is you open up the jaws wide enough, and you can do this on motorcycles, you can do this on lawnmowers, and you can do this on any equipment that has one of these types of cables. But you put your cable through, you set it up right here, after you get it through, of course. You put it all the way to the top, and you tighten the screw down, which holds it. And if you can go through there like that, you're doing good. If you can go through there like that. And then you put the thing in the hole. And then I bring my other end out here. And I just squirt until I can see it come out the other end. And there it is. And now you have a lubed cable that'll last a lot longer than if you put it on there dry when you replace it. Okay, so yesterday we did a video on how to lube a throttle cable. Now we're going to do a video on how to change your cable on a still BR500, 550, 600, and 700. So let's get started. When I do this, I always like to remove the handle first. So this is done by two screws right here. That makes this easier to pull off. And if I know how this, or if I, when you want to know how this needs to be replaced, well, it's the sheath is broke right there, and it's kind of limp, and it no longer returns the spring. Your uh, spring for this is normally returned through the carburetor itself back in here. So, anyways, so now that we're getting started, we got a 20 millimeter. We are 20 uh, T20 Torx, we got a T27, and we got our new throttle cable, and if you look in the bottom here, you can't really see it, but there is a spring in there that goes inside the throttle handle. So with our two screws removed, we can now pull this thing off and up, and it comes off just like so. So now that we got our cable undone, we're going to take these four screws out. There's two in here. And then we're going to take these three screws out and remove this assembly. So now that we got our three screws undone, we can pull the starter rope assembly off. You're going to want to be careful when you do this. There's these bushings in here. And these a lot of times will fall out. So what I like to do is I like to get the magnet in, which you can see that by the north and the south. And I like to put it right up against the magneto. That way it's in between. You can normally get it to sit there pretty easily. That way it doesn't pull these little steel wire um, spacers out. So with your four screws removed, you're going to want to slightly lift on this. You're going to want to push the spark plug loop down up top here. And you're going to want to pull back. And now you have access. And you're going to want to make sure that these are all intact. Now that was a screw that dropped because the two top ones were still in place. But... You don't want these to fall in there. What these will do is they'll get lodged in between the flywheel and the magneto and you'll mess the whole thing up. Um, while I'm in here too, I also make sure that these things are okay. These are your annular boofers. Like this one right here is broke. You don't want a broken one. When they do that, they break the housing and they'll also break the gas tank and they'll start to wear through. And you'll get a fuel leak and that can be dangerous. So now we're going to take off the spark plug wire here. And then we're going to remove these because these are actually part of the throttle cable, the kill wires. So I normally just take the end of it and just kick them up. And then I can pull them off. There's a screw right here we pull out. And then there's a screw up top we pull out. Right here. This one's a little tougher to get out. cover comes off. 
straightforward like, and we'll just set that right there. And now I'm ready to actually pull the carburetor and the air filter housing off. So that's two screws, pretty straightforward and simple. <clears throat> Or in this case, maybe not so simple. This one feels like it's stripped out, so we're going to actually have to cut that off. And it's a good thing I have extra air filter housing because that's not a fun job. So, in the next segment, we're going to have this removed and we're going to go into it. Well, I can't get this out, but when you pull this out, um, your throttle cable is back here. I can get a good video or a good um, area of that. So right back here is your throttle cable assembly. What you're going to do is you're going to lift this off of it, just like so. You're going to lift it off at the bottom. Now you can move the cable up and you can slide it right out. And then you can slide the whole assembly out just like so. Now we're going to take out this bolt, we're going to take out this bolt, and we're going to separate the handle. And these are T20s. The ones that pull off the fan cover are T27s. You probably already knew that because you already got your fan cover off, or you fast forwarded it to see how to do this part. So now that you got the handle bolts out, now you can separate it. If you see inside here, this is where your throttle cable hooks up to. And you just kind of undo it. And if you need be, or if you need to, you can pull off this spring here by unlatching it. Just set that aside. Pull your cable up and wiggle it unloose. And then inside here, this one's got a switch. So what we're going to do, things that this is an older model, we're going to convert this over to the spring. this tang is on there, what you're going to do is you're going to slide this tang into this assembly right here, downward, with the connector below this orange piece, and then you're going to route that out, like so. You're going to route it around and through. And once you've got that routed through this area up here, like so, what you're going to do is you're going to want to take this blue one, and this blue one is going to go, you're going to have to hold your cable steady, but this blue one is going to go on this one right here, this little tang, this little orange um, stud. And what you're going to do is you're going to place this on that, and you're going to route this at the top through this one right here and around. And after you've got these routed up and around the way that they go and need to be, it's kind of a bear, but you'll figure it out. Everybody has their own way of doing it. Sometimes you got to put the throttle cable up on the bench so you don't have to sit there and hold it. But what I'll oftentimes do is I'll use a screwdriver and I'll kind of poke where I need to get the wires at. Um, you can use a non-metallic screwdriver. But I'll get these situated where I need to get them situated at. That way they're in there. And just work them down to where they need to go inside the housing here. And you'll want to work these in so that they go all the way down and through. And you want to 
make it too so that the wire doesn't twist because you want that to be even all the way through. And I always put the blue wire on the top just for safe keepings. I don't know why. It just seems to work better that way. And I'm trying to not to get my hands too much in the way here. Now that I got that situated in there, if I'm having too much of a difficulty, what I can do is I can pull on the one and make it, you know, so it lengthens it and shortens it on one end. And now I can just put these wires through here like I'm doing. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to pull my cable sheathing through the housing of this conduit. And I'm going to use that to hold the wires in place. And now that I've got all that situated, now what I can do is I can put this white piece back in where it came from. And that would be right like this. Get it oriented in the right direction. And just push it on. And if you want to make sure that this works, just tension this up when you go to kill it and watch it touch. And if you can see it touch, then you've done the job right. And if you want, take an ohmmeter on the wire leads, set it to resistance. But uh, you can set it to sound if you want, or you can set it to resistance. It really doesn't matter. So I just set it to sound. And what I'll do is I'll hook those up to the leads on the cable here. And if you ever do wall outlets or anything like that, wiring your house or whatever, you always want to double check that you did the job right. Because you don't want those touching. That'll blow the meter every time. But when it's done its job, you'll hear the sound like that. And what we can do is we can verify we did it correctly by simply killing it. And you've done the job right. So now that we've tested that out, we need to get our throttle cable situated back inside the housing. I'm going to make sure it is routed in the correct orientation. And then we can take our throttle piece right here, extend the cable all the way, and put it back together like so. You might have to manipulate this housing a little bit to get it in there, but here it is. That's it. And now we're going to put the spring back on there. The spring goes like so, and then goes up and underneath. Once you've got it all the way down, this thing isn't all the way down, it looks like. So we need to get this oriented correctly. So there's a little tang right here that you can see. Um, I may have this backwards. No, I don't have it backwards. It just isn't all the way down. There we go. Now it's all the way down. So you'll put your spring in there like so. And then you'll orient this one around the edge. And now it's locked in place. And now your throttle return is set. And now you can route this outside. I'm going to keep it held there. And now you can put your throttle cable handle back together. And just make sure that this is the way it's routed. And that it's all closed and lined up. And you'll be good to go. 
these are sometimes a bear because they don't always line up right, but there. Now you got it lined up right. You can stick your screw in. You can stick your other screw in right there. And if you want, if your screws are bunged up like this one is slightly, um, it's just got a little bit of a bit in there. But anyways, the camera won't focus for whatever reason. There we go. So this one's got crap in it. I just take a pick is what I normally do. Just kind of pick that out a little bit. Let the dirt fall out. Blow it out. And you should be able to stick your screwdriver in there without a problem. And now you can tighten up both these bolts. Okay, so now that we got our throttle cable assembly assembled, what we're going to do is we're going to take this down here. I'm just going to pull it through. You want to make sure your wires go up here and are routed correctly. And you're going to want to leave them off because this piece has to go on first. But this is what I normally do. Is I leave this off because i got to bend this housing back. So what I'll do is I'll bend this housing back after i got it routed um, behind the fuel line here. Route this behind the fuel lines because they don't want it coming in front of them. And then I'm going to take it and I'm going to route this through my throttle or through my carburetor first. Then I'm going to stick it on its um, stop right here or its purge, as motorcycle guys will call it, the purge. And then I'm going to stick it in its holder. And now I can put this back together without a problem after I get everything oriented correctly and by oriented correctly um, there are little deals underneath here where you're going to want to get you're just going to stick the throttle cable in there temporarily and you're going to want to make sure that this pulse hose right here doesn't come off the bottom of your carburetor if it does you're going to want to push that back on because otherwise your blower will not run and now you're going to want to make sure this bushing stays in place these will oftentimes wear out over time but now you can actually put this piece back on to the unit you're going to want to route the spark plug wire over it and then this has a tab right here that's going to Keep the throttle cable in between the orange housing and the white housing in order to keep it so it's straight. And you're going to want to make sure you line up the areas and you line up your little bushing down there where it goes on to while making sure that this hose is still connected to the carburetor. It's fairly easy. And now that you've got all that lined up, you can go through. This one goes through that little cutout area. You're going to want to put the blue cable on the ground. So blue cable goes to ground and sometimes you actually got to pull these wires on a little bit out of this sheathing here a little bit or cut it back. Um, because a lot of times when you do the throttle cable it doesn't give enough clearance so I was able to pull these back real easily. Now that I've got that housing on, I can connect it real easily and get this one connected. This is your uh, um, the coil one, the signal wire that you want to kill that you're actually doing when you shut off the engine. And with those on, route them underneath like so. And then you remember which screws. Um, Your screws are these ones right here. You just stick those back in. And now you can 
install your housing, after you make sure your throttle cable is lined up, and you're going to want to make sure that these orange ones, this one has a tab that lines up, and this one on the bottom lines up as well. You just make sure those are lined up correctly. Then you can put your bolt through. Make sure that these are pushed down where they need to be because what will happen is these will get out of alignment and they'll pinch on something. We gotta find out what we're pinched on. There we go, now we got it lined up correctly. So now that we got the housing lined up correctly, now we can put the bolt in. We're just going to start it here, make sure our bushing's in place, which it is, and our two, um, what do they call those molded pieces that line it up to the actual blower housing are good. And that snapped into place, that was the bushing you heard pop, now we got this one done. Now we can put our housing back on. After we put our spark plug wire back on, of course, first. Make sure your coil wire is lined up right there. Or your uh, flywheel is lined up right there. And what's probably going to happen next week is uh, I'm going to order up the parts for those annular boofers because those are worn. Those need to be replaced. Now you can stick your bolts back in the housing. And as long as this is lined up like so, and you've got this in there, this is actually on a, um, it's got a cutout for it to go into. And I normally, when I do these bottom ones, I normally shove it in, I look in there and I see where it's oriented at. And I use the screwdriver to hold it, that way I get it in correctly. Just tighten those up a little bit. Because they're plastic, they don't require a lot. And then we can put these in after we verify all our bushings are in there, which they are. I'm not going to do anything about that right now either, that rope, because I don't have an extra one. Let's start that one. Start this one. And then start that one, and now you can tighten them up. And then if you need to adjust it, there's a screw 
inside this hole here so if it has any sort of play which this one doesn't or if it's idling too fast um, what I normally do is I'll actually test these beforehand and it's a flathead screwdriver that goes in there so I need to get one of those When I put them back together, I like, to, I like to have a little bit of slop, so sometimes as these wear out, they don't get the slop that they need. So when I have a little bit like so, I can just barely move it without it touching the carburetor. Yep, that's when I know that I'm good on the adjustment. Yep. Yep, that's good. That looks good. And then I just put it back on my purge here. I'll put it back on my purge, making sure that it's routed the correct way. This one actually needs a clamp. It's broken. But um, after that, just stick my two bolts in. Or screws in. Whatever you want to call them. And there you have it. Make sure that your cable's routed around the outside with no binds in it, and you're good to go. There's normally a loop that goes into this, but this clamp is broken because this one's commercially used, and these guys are idiots. And if you notice, too, there's a crack here. Um, that's something you're going to want to check out that's common. And then these uh, right here, you're going to want to make sure that there's no play in there. A lot of guys will duct tape the hell out of that, and that tells you that that slip ring in there needs to be replaced. And I also, too, I'll make sure that these clamps aren't broke. Um, a lot of times these screws will come out because they've got this wonky um, system set up for their tensioning. So you can move the, you can slide the handle up and down to and from. But there you have it. Now you've got a blower that has a new throttle cable.